Hey everyone, it's Dave Stop in my Pete's Garage. I'm getting ready to start a new video series, How to Rebuild an Engine. That is, how to pull the engine out of your car, how to tear it down, evaluate all the components, get everything cleaned up, machined, put back together, running, back in the car, and back on the road. I'll be doing it on the vehicle behind me. This is a beautiful 1962 Studebaker with a 289 engine in it. And I know what you're thinking, it's not a Ford 289, this is a 1962 Studebaker 90 degree V8. It's a gorgeous engine and a gorgeous car. Let's take a walk around and I'll tell you a little bit about the car and the history and a little about the engine that we're going to be rebuilding for this series. Let's take a look. Now there's no mistake in those white walls or that hubcap on this beautiful 1962 Studebaker Hawk GT. The GT stands for Gran Turismo. These cars were produced by the merged Studebaker Packard Corporation between 56 and 64 and all of them but the 1958 Packard Hawk were badged as Studebakers. Now this particular car, this car was ordered the day after Christmas, December 26th of 1961, and was set to be built in the South Bend Packard facility. On January 2nd of 62, the Union went on strike, and this vehicle sat on the assembly line while the Union was on strike. They ratified their contract, the uh, UAW Local Number 5, they ratified their contract uh, uh, February 12th of 62 and the final assembly of this vehicle was February 14th of 62 and it was delivered to its uh, first owner from Snuffy Smith Motors in Dallas, Texas in March on uh, March 6th of 1962. So this vehicle is uh, has an interesting story about sitting on the assembly line. Now during the 30s and through the 60s uh, these vehicles were painted and I was looking at the paint of these. These were painted with both, uh, they used either nitrous cellulose lacquer or alkaline enamels. They were used in automobile production. Now Chrysler, Ford, Nash, Willys, Studebaker, they all used alkaline enamels but they were baked on. So this particular car has a baked on enamel and I measured the paint on these vehicle, on this car and, and the real thin where you can see the patina coming through there. Uh, the thickness of the paint is like 0.1 mils and if I go to a real thick part of the car around the fender here, uh, I, I measured up to 35 mils. So this enamel was hand sprayed on the assembly line and it was really difficult to get an even coating. So it's heavy in some spots and light in other, other spots. Now, if we go to look at the interior of this car, the interior is original. Uh, I'll open up the door here and it's really kind of cool. The uh, door has the original service stickers that when, it, when you got your car serviced, and I see here Irving, Texas. Dallas, Texas, some neat stickers there. And, and here, the interior is all original on this car. The door panels, inter interior door panels are original. It has a real unique uh, sill here. You can see the rocker panel is stainless steel. It's really small. But the, uh, everything's, well, it's all original except for the seat covers. The seat covers have been replaced. Real nice uh, center console there with the ashtray. And if you fold up the seats, you have an ashtray on the back of the seat for the back seat passengers, which is kind of neat. A lot of room in this car. Beautiful. I just I took it for a ride just a little while ago, and it really has a lot of power for this V8. The other interesting thing is, when you bought a Packard, you could get this plaque made for your car, and this plaque says, "Congratulations! It's a Gran Turismo Hawk, quality built, expressly for." Virginia Sanborn, who was the original purchaser of this vehicle, so you can get a little plate put on your car for a couple bucks. This one happened to have a radio delete plate in it. The radio delete plate is there is because the radio for this car is sent out and it's getting some modern upgrades put into Bluetooth, a little more power, a little more modern. Nice little glove box there. All the stainless steel and this dash is, is all original. Boy, is that neat. Real nice car. The other interesting thing is you look here now this this you can see it looks like a Thunderbird if I were just to show you one portion of the car you'd say oh Thunderbird but um, along the roof line here I'm gonna try and get a picture of this I don't know if you can see this but there's some you can see the lead now this this whole seam on the roof line would be put by put in by with lead at the factory and you can see it the original lead you can see where they kind of rushed the job and they didn't sand it down enough or didn't finish it enough and you can see the lead line is very very obvious that's the way it came from the factory this paint is extremely shiny and this car has probably been polished shine and buffed for the last what 50 54 years or so but the stainless steel moldings are all in excellent condition the the rear of the trunk the chrome and there you see the the uh, stainless dual exhaust on this which is pretty cool and the trunk has the uh, 
springs with the the hood, hood hinges have the springs on there which is really really cool for this year. Uh, I have uh, the storyboard for this car and this is kind of interesting. I know it's tough to see but I'll just tell you for new 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 in 62 LAR big comfort big car comfort big price the Grand Turismo by Studebaker and here are some of the options on this car and it's kind of funny to read uh, things like um, let's see the paint, everything was included. The base price of this car was $3,095. Uh, the Flightomatic, the uh, two speed automatic transmission, $199.50. Tinted glass windshield, $9.63. That's a bargain, huh? Power steering, $77. Uh, they had twin traction, which was their positive traction rear end for that, was $38, $39. Firestone tires included with the big white sidewalls. Let's see what else we had here. Climatizer, oh my god, interior. Heated interior. That was an option. Electric window washers, $11.85 if you wanted window washers. The radio was uh, $66.72, which seems like a lot, but it was, and it was $12.95 for a rear speaker, and, uh, which, is, which is kind of expensive if you think about it. For $62, based on the fact that a new house was $18,000, and average income was only $5,200, and gas was $0.31 cents a gallon. So, you know, there's some big money there. And again, this is a 289 engine. V, uh, 29 cubic inch V8, 225 horsepower, came with a four barrel carburetor, the, the dual stainless steel exhaust, and the twin traction, which is the Studebaker version of Posi traction. Uh, as we come around, you can see that the paint is in gorgeous condition, it's really shiny, and again, if I go on the side here, you can kind of see this, this line right here where, where the lead line is, where when they put the roof on. Kind of neat. Open up this door. This door does have some service stickers on it. And again, it's extremely clean. Very nice. Very clean. It's cool to see all those gauges, like they used to be all those mechanical vents, vent controls and mirror controls. And yes, this mirror on the outside was an option. You have the vents that would open up like this to bring some cool air into the engine compartment, or I'm sorry, into the passenger compartment. And here are the optional window squirts. So if you wanted squirts on your windshield, that was optional. This vehicle is number uh, 4,307 off the assembly line. So, not too bad for that year. They sold about 8,400 of these in the United States, I guess. Maybe 950 went to overseas, which means a total of about 90, what, 9,300 of these were made. So this was made halfway through production model year for that year. Now, the interesting thing about this engine, this is a 289 Studebaker engine. It's not a Ford engine. That 289 has absolutely nothing to do with Ford. That's just how the cubic inches came out when they made the thing. It originally started uh, back in as a, as a 232. The uh, Studebaker V8 engines were introduced in 51, which replaced their Commander 6, but this 289 started out as a 232. They boarded it out to 259 and then they settled on 289. And that was in 62 before Ford even made their 289, so there's nothing nothing to do with Ford, but you can see the intake manifold, the rear distributor, and just the way the configuration there, it's more like a Chevy than it is a Ford. It's a 90 degree V8. Um, the in other interesting thing about this is 289, in, in 57, Packard used to use this engine, they put a supercharger on it, and it would take the horsepower up to 275 horsepower for the supercharged Hawks. So if you can imagine a 289 with a supercharger on it, putting out that many horsepower, it had a lot of speed. This is a, this is a what, 220 horsepower V8 with the four barrel carb, and it's pretty spunky, but it's got a dead cylinder in there and a couple of, couple other things wrong with it. That's why we're rebuilding it. The owner wants to have a fresh engine and go on a trip, so we're going to rebuild it for him. The other interesting thing, and we'll get, we'll get more to the engine as I rebuild it, but this engine doesn't have an oil filter. They didn't use oil filters on this engine. You have a long stem for filling, and there was a way to put, uh, put a filter in, but it didn't come with an oil filter. Real interesting, huh? So this will be our project, the 289 rebuild out of the 1962 Studebaker Hawk GT. So there is our next project coming up, 1962 Studebaker with a 289 engine. Make sure you stop back to Pete's Garage.